Literature gives us the opportunity to experience lives, perspectives, and worlds different from our own. Though remember, friend, a good story has many readings, and this is but one. The woman you loved spurned you for another man because of your social class. Her brother mocked and abused you. But now, you've returned to Wuthering Heights, self-made and wealthy, ready to enact a little payback on her and her brother, and their spouses, and their kids, actually. Oh, and did we mention that she's your half-sister? Yeah, things are darkly complicated for Heathcliff, the protagonist of Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights that inspired quite the scandal in its day. And of course, in our day, it inspired the wonderful Kate Bush song. No, not that one, Vecna stands. The other one, the one with the same name. Wait a minute, you didn't know it was a book before it was a song? <laughs> well, we would seriously be letting down Kate Bush if we didn't take the opportunity to introduce you to this steamy gothic classic. And we would never let down Kate Bush. Thanks so much to Nebula for being, in our opinion, the best streaming service around. More on that and how you can watch your first video free after the episode. So you haven't read Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. That's a dang shame, because literary experts have ranked it amongst the greatest works in the English language, and the bad romance between Heathcliff and Catherine has inspired dozens of derivative works, including that Kate Bush non-Stranger Things track of the same name that we mentioned before. We're gonna keep mentioning it, by the way, because it's awesome. In Wuthering Heights, Bronte created a prime example of what is known as a gothic novel, a book that relies, among other things, on a frighteningly claustrophobic atmosphere, the presence of the supernatural, and plots where the past is messing with the present. However, it's often further identified as a female gothic novel, because it replaces the supernatural with the actual daily horrors women faced as second-class citizens in the 19th century. And it also should be noted that these genres tend to be crammed to the brim with sexual tension and desire, on the surface level, but especially in the subtext. Actually, you can see our episode on Dracula for more on that. But for now, prepare yourself to get hot and heavy, because you are Heathcliff. Oh, no, Zoe, sorry, <laughs> not that Heathcliff, bud. Man, she's been crushing on that animated bad boy since she was a kitten. As our story begins, you are a bitter man, living on a rundown estate named Wuthering Heights in the Yorkshire Moors, with the daughter of your former lover and the son of your bitterest rival. Which might seem odd right now, but trust us, it's all part of your elaborate multi-generational revenge scheme. One day, you're visited by a man named Mr. Lockwood, who's renting another one of your properties. And while staying the night at Wuthering Heights, he finds a diary by someone named Catherine Earnshaw, a long-dead former resident of the estate, and is eventually visited by her ghost, which of course inspired Kate Bush's chorus, but no, no, we are talking about the book. Spooked by that spirit, Mr. Lockwood flees back to his rental, where his housekeeper, Nellie, recounts to him the whole backstory. Decades ago, Wuthering Heights was owned by Mr. Earnshaw, who had two children, Catherine and Hindley. But one day, Mr. Earnshaw returns to the estate with a new adopted child, which is you, Heathcliff, and he proceeds to spoil you rotten at the expense of his other kids. Hindley does not take kindly to this and beats you. Plus, when he becomes master of the estate later on, he does let you stay, but only as a servant. You and Catherine, however, become fast friends. And as you got older, romantic sparks started to smolder, despite the fact she's your stepsister and way above you in social class. And then there's the neighbors, the Lintons, who also have two children, Edgar and Isabella, that are the same age as you and Catherine. Edgar and Hindley immediately bond over the fact they enjoy physically abusing you. And what's worse, Catherine decides to marry Edgar, even though she loves you, because your social class gap is just too great. Yeah, it's at this point you decide to bail, and Catherine becomes so distraught by your departure that she falls ill. But while you're off plotting your revenge, let's take a moment to visit the Bronte household. Emily Bronte and her sisters Charlotte and Anne demonstrated a gift for storytelling from an early age. And because they lived in Yorkshire, rather than a literary hub like London, they developed their talents in relative isolation. And all three women wrote now classic novels, including Emily's Wuthering Heights, Charlotte's Jane Eyre, and Anne's Agnes Grey. While many contemporary critics praised Wuthering Heights immediately, a scandal erupted because some scathing reviews panned the book for defying Victorian beliefs about gender equality, class structure, and depictions of cruelty, not to mention the burning love between different socially classed step-siblings. But you know what happens when something is denounced as depraved. That's right, sales went through the roof. However, Emily died at the age of 30 of consumption. After her death, Charlotte became the curator of her work and her reputation, and tried to make excuses for Emily's depraved writing. 
claiming, for example, she was more of a child of the Moors than of civilized society. There was also evidence to suggest Charlotte actually burned Emily's second novel because of the scandal that Wuthering Heights had caused. I guess the survivors do really get to control the history. Which is, coincidentally, part of your, Heathcliff's, master plan. When you return three years later, you are miraculously wealthy. Not sure exactly how that happened, but okay. Catherine, pregnant with her husband, Edgar's child, is overjoyed at your return. Nah, but you don't have time for that. You're on the revenge path now. So, to make her jealous, you start pursuing Isabella, who's always kind of had a thing for you in the background. You also win the deed to Wuthering Heights from your old rival Hindley while gambling. Ha <laughs> ha, yes! Everything's coming up, Heathcliff! You elope with Isabella, which you both quickly realize was a horrible mistake, but your marriage sends Catherine into a tailspin, and when you return to Wuthering Heights, you learn that she's dying. Oh, that was not part of the plan. So you decide to sneak in to see her one last time. She subsequently dies in childbirth, leaving you absolutely distraught. Now most people would probably back off a revenge scheme at this point, but you are not most people. See, Hindley dies a few months later, leaving you at Wuthering Heights with his son, Hareton, who you then make a servant. <laughs> Take that, dead Hindley! And a bunch of years later, you pressure Edgar and Catherine's now-adult daughter, also named Kathy, to marry your son, who you had with the now-dead Isabella, so that you can inherit Edgar's estate when he dies. Take that, dead Edgar! And then, your son dies, and- oh, uh, uh, take that, alive, you? And somewhere, within all of that, you terrorize your household by describing how you dug up Catherine's coffin with an intent to embrace her corpse. An iconic literary moment, sure, but... <coughs> yeah. Which brings us back to the present day. Haunted by Catherine's ghost, you lock yourself in her room until you die. But this frees a delighted young Kathy and Hareton to marry, even though their social classes don't match. And local residents report seeing you and Catherine's ghosts walking together through the moors. Wuthering Heights is sometimes described as a love story, but there's also a strong case to be made that it's more of a horror tale. Heathcliff might not have supernatural powers, but his malice ends up ruining the lives of everyone around him. The first sign of new joy in the lives of any of his relatives doesn't happen until he's dead, and Catherine and Heathcliff, for their part, can only truly be together as ghosts. And, like his bro Count Dracula, Heathcliff is a compelling, often sympathetic character, despite his monstrous actions. But as always, don't just take my word for it. You should go read it and decide that for yourself. Wuthering Heights is a terrific gothic novel that showcases Emily Bronte's skill at storytelling, characterization, and dialogue. It offers a compelling, honest look at what life was actually like in Victorian England, and it stands out from its romantic era peers, not just because it inspired Kate Bush, which it totally did, but because Bronte's innovations to gothic romance helped set the stage for 20th and 21st century literature. So head to your local library and check out this steamy all-time classic. Oh, but double-check the book before you go home, because if it features a whole lot of pictures of an orange cat, somebody has tricked you into picking up the wrong book. Ask me how I know. Though you want to know another thing I know, you could be watching this video and thousands more all ad-free over on our streaming service Nebula. Like, for instance, if you enjoyed this smoldering discussion of Wuthering Heights, then you could watch other lit we've covered, such as Romeo and Juliet, Pride and Prejudice, and Dracula, all without watching ads like, you know, this one. That's because when we built Nebula with a bunch of our creator friends, we wanted to make sure it was the best streaming platform possible. But Matt, you say, what does that actually mean? <laughs> oh man, I am so glad I imagined you asked, as I've prepared a list of all the awesomeness. On Nebula, you get all of our videos with zero ads a day early, Nebula-specific original content, and lots of places to watch it, because we've got native apps for iOS, Android, Apple TV, Roku, Fire TV, and Android TV. Plus, a Nebula subscription is a fantastic way to directly support us at EC and over 150 other creators that you love, including TierZoo, Real Science, and Legal Eagle, to name a few, giving us all the freedom to experiment with ideas we just can't do on YouTube. Case in point, we just started Nebula Classes, our new platform where your favorite creators personally teach you tons of awesome stuff. Everything from how to make a movie, to producing a pop song, to the secrets of persuasive communication. A new class drops each week, and actually, our studio director Jeff just released one called 10 Things to Decide Before Creating a Video Game, where he teaches you the best practices for making your game, or really any creative project, a commercial success. Or if you're looking for a bit of career guidance, in my talk, How to Be Ready for Your Dream Job, 
I use stories from my professional pre-YouTube life as a television producer to teach lessons I wish I had known earlier in my career. Oh, so many of those. Um, oh, where was I? Oh, yeah, right now. If you sign up for Nebula using our link below, you'll get to take advantage of our 40% discount, meaning it's just three bucks a month or $30 annually. Or if you want to bundle classes in with the rest of the Nebula goodness, that's only $119 for an entire year. Hmm, still not convinced, eh? Well, you drive a hard bargain, friendo. Okay, okay. How about the first time you visit Nebula, the first video you watch is on us. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely free. Don't even have to put in your credit card information or anything. We'll even put a couple of suggestions we think you'd enjoy in the description below. Seriously, though, I know I speak for all of my creator friends when I say we would love for you to come over there and just experience what we're all so excited about. So as always, thanks so much for your support, and we hope to see you over on Nebula. Would you believe me if I told you that Ahmed Ziad Turk, Alicia Bramble, Angela Valenciana, Arcalite Games, Casey Muscha, Dominic Valenciana, Joseph Flame, and Skylar Holmes were all legendary patrons? Because it's true!